Hello and welcome. My name's Campbell. This is Autodidactic Channel. Thank you for joining me. And of course, autodidactic means to be self-educated. And that's what we do here. We look into mainly history, the stories they've told us, and we see if they make any sense at all, or if it's just all a story, his story. And today, I have found something that breaks that story that they want us to believe about our past. And it's got to do with star forts. So let's jump in and have a look. Okay, so what we're going to look at is Bahrain Fort. The Bahrain Fort of Kalat al Bahrain is an ancient tell and former Portuguese military fortification, of course, on the UNESCO World Heritage List. And what does that mean? That means we can't go and explore, right? It's, it's barred off to us. Again, you know, preserving their lie and doing their best to prevent us from going in and checking their story. So the Bahrain Fort and the Tell, which is just an ancient structure or an ancient mound, uh, it's built on and located on Bahrain Island on the northern seashore. And the Tell is the largest in the Persian Gulf region. And it tells us that archaeological findings which are unearthed in the fort reveal much about the history of the country the area is thought to have been occupied for about 5,000 years and contains a valuable insight into the Copper and Bronze Age of Bahrain. The first Bahrain fort was built around 3,000 years ago on the, northeast, on the northeastern peak of Bahrain Island. The present fort dates from the 6th century AD, the capital of the Dilmun civilization. Dilmun was, according to the Epic of Gilgamesh, the land of immortality, the ancestral place of Sumerians and a meeting point of the gods. The site is 17 and a half hectares in area and has been termed as Bahrain's most important site in antiquity. And they have been excavating this place since the 1950s and there is a massive problem with that little story that I have just told you because they tell us that the fort was first built around 3,000 years ago and the present fort or the present structure that they are unearthing and studying is from the 6th century AD. And they tell us here on Wikipedia that Bastion forts, as they're called, or star forts, were first constructed in the 1500s. Okay, so that's 900 years after the 6th century AD, obviously. And it says that bastion fortifications were further developed in the late 1500s. Uh, and there is a story that, you know, these all started off as mounds and, you know, earthen forts and all this kind of stuff. But the true star forts that we still see all around the realm that are huge and that are made from masonry were first constructed in the 1500s. It says bastion fortifications were further developed in the late 15th and early 16th centuries, primarily in response to the French invasion of the Italian peninsula. The French army was equipped with new cannon and bombardments that were easily able to destroy the traditional fortifications built in the Middle Ages. Star forts were employed by Michelangelo in the defensive earthworks of Florence and refined in the 16th century by Baudicer Peruzzi and Vincenzo Scamozzi. The design spread out of Italy in the 1530s and the 1540s. So they are telling us that the original concept and design Four star forts came out of Italy in the 1530s or 40s. So riddle me this. How do we have a star fort in Bahrain that we are told predates that date by 900 years? Because this, the fort that we're looking at, Bahrain Fort, 
is being excavated. They didn't know it was there. They found it in the 1950s. And after digging down, they are saying it was constructed in the 6th century AD. Star forts were employed heavily throughout Europe for the following three centuries. So again, the narrative says that they were built for 300 years between the mid 15 or 1400s up to the mid 1700s is the general age is given, which I, I will say that has changed as well. When I first started researching this topic, they said, you know, it was about 200 years. So, so they're, you know, the, the Wikipedia page on star forts has been rewritten a lot in the last three years since i first read it they have evolved it a lot to turn it into this thing where that they were evolving forts you know started as mound and earth and all this kind of thing and then you know in the 1500s this band of merry star fort builders who were italians and french went around the, the realm and turned them all to star forts but of course they didn't go around the realm they went around europe so this narrative cannot explain the star forts we find in Africa, in the Americas, throughout Asia, and we even have them here in Australia. It says star forts were heavily employed throughout Europe for the following three centuries. Italian engineers were heavily in demand throughout Europe to help build the new fortifications. The late 17th century architects, Menno van Kuhun, Cohoon, and especially Vauban, Louis XIV's military engineer, are considered to have taken the form to its logical extreme. Fortresses acquired ravelins and redoubts, bonnets and lunettes, tenelies and tenelians, counterguards and crownworks and hornworks and all these other bits that they're trying to give names to, right? Uh, where, you know, we know after doing the research here that these were not built as forts. These are not constructions of war. And they definitely were not built between the 15 and 1700s. These are cymatic shapes built around water and seem to have a huge connection to energy. And they are a relic of a civilization that was all across this realm before the last reset, before our time, the old world. So that's the story. The, the mainstream narrative, star forts developed, you know, the, the modern star forts that we see developed in Italy and didn't spread out from Italy until at least the 1530s. So again, there is a massive problem with this narrative because we are looking at a star fort that they are saying was built in the 6th century AD. And it tells us that Bahrain Fort is a typical tell, an artificial mound created by many successive layers of human occupation. This testifies to a continuous human presence from about 2300 BC to the 16th century AD. About 25% of the site has been excavated revealing structures of different types. And as we know, these star forts are covered up. Most of them are still underground. And we are told that the first excavations on this site were carried out by a Danish archaeological expedition led by Geoffrey Bibby between 1954 and 1972 on behalf of the Prehistoric Museum of Mosgard. A few undated but Cassite era cuneiform tablets were found. Beginning in the 1970s, a French expedition from the National Centre for Scientific Research on the site uncovered about 50 cuneiform tablets. Three of them were dated to the reign of a Cassite king named Agum. So, King Agum. So, as they are excavating this site, they have found tablets with cuneiform on them and cuneiform of course is an a language much much more ancient it was a dead language by the 1500s okay so they have found these in the fort and they are attributed to king agum now king agum 
was a Kassite king of Babylon in the mid-15th century BC. Spectacular. Little is known about King Agum, with the only Babylonian reference to him from an expedition he led against the sea land, a region synonymous with Sumer, around 1465 BC, which is described in the Chronicle of Early Kings. So that is the story that we are told. As far as the expeditions, this site goes way back to around 1500 BC and is tied to Sumer, Sumeria, which, of course, we are told is the first civilization. Okay, and as we can see, this is a star fort. It is the same construction with the same features as all the other star forts across the realm, which the narrative tells us were all built between, they have changed the date, so now they're saying maybe the sort of 1450s up to about the 1750s but definitely not, not the 6th century AD and definitely not the mid-15th century BC. So this, this site, this star fort, proves the narrative is lying to us. It is completely false. So now let's have a look at this Fort Bahrain on Google Earth. So here we are on Google Earth, and as you can see, this is Africa, this is the Middle East, this is the Persian Gulf, and down here we have Bahrain. It's an island. And if we come down, we will see the structure that we're talking about. And there it is. Now, of course, not the best photo, that's what they want us to believe, right, from Google Earth. It looks like they're, they're trying to sort of hide the shape of this, right? But you can tell right here. And this pointy bit here is a Ravelin. They call them Ravelins. Another one here. This is a star fort. Another Ravelin here. We have the inner walls. We have all the, the usual markings of a star fort. But this one's still being excavated, right, 50, 60, 70 years later, still excavating it. And as they told us, only 25% of this has been uncovered. And there's another bit here, which looks like an old civilization. But this is what we are looking at, the Fort of Bahrain. So if we go down here and have a look, you can see this is the same construction we see everywhere. Big, huge masonry walls. All these angles, the bastions, the high walls, all the features. And I find it interesting that they've given us these photos from nighttime. It's just because they're trying to hide what, what we can actually see here. Okay, and here we are now inside the fort, and it's daytime. Thank you, Google. And we can see this is a, a very old structure, but look at the work here. Perfect work, as we see everywhere, totally symmetrical, highly advanced engineering. And as you can see, this is made from stones. These look to be, you know, very quarried stones, you know, cut into brick-type shapes. And this is the structure they're telling us is from at least the 6th century BC. They say there was something here before that. Uh, but this structure, they are saying, from the 6th century BC, 900 years before it should be there. And you can see this goes down underground as well. And as I mentioned before, they've only uncovered 25% of this. So here is an aerial shot of the fort. And as you can see, it's a star fort. What we're told, or what we're calling a star fort, I'd prefer the, to call them stars. Because as I've said, these are not forts. They are not made for war. That's just a narrative to make us believe that we are the ones destroying this realm when clearly it is this parasitic influence 
of these elites or Lites, right? The L. So here we have it with all these familiar features. Okay, the high walls, the bastions, the circular towers. Everything here speaks of Starfort. And here we have a shot on the top of the fort. And as we can see, we have a belfry up here. And now these are a common feature on these star forts with the little domed roof. But of course, they're trying to tell us this has nothing to do with any other star fort construction in the realm. Here we have it from above again, an aerial view which clearly shows this is a star fort. At least what we what we you know what we're told is a star fort, a star. That's what this is, and you can see it was attached to civilization, right, to a city. So this is probably a citadel connected to an old star city. Here's another shot, and in here we can see. I mean, it looks like there's been a lot of retrofitting here. They've covered everything up with cement by the looks of it, but we still see the familiar features like this arch. And as you can see, it's even got the mouldings in here. Over here, we have the tops of these windows. This one, I don't know what's going on here. But those windows, the shape of them, we're told, is Islamic. But again, we see these as a feature in all old world buildings and star forts. Here's a front shot. They've obviously cleaned it up a bit, but again, right, it's the same story everywhere. And they, they try and make it look like it's for war, but clearly this has had no damage taken to a bit of damage here, but not, I would think, by war. If this had been through war with cannons, etc., it would have the signs and the showings of that. Another shot just to show us it was moated. It did have water flowing around it, just like every other star fort. And you can see the thickness of the walls here. Look at this. Okay, and that's just half the wall. It looks like this bit's fallen off, I'm not sure. But extremely thick walls, as we see everywhere. Here's another shot. And, of course, you know, these star forts, these are what they used to tell us were castles. We now know better, you know, these moated castles were actually just stars. Uh, and the water wasn't to keep the enemies out. It was, it was current flowing around. There was structured water. It was there for the benefit of the people. Here's another shot with these arched, you know, these pointed arches, again, that we're told is you know, Islamic. But look at the symmetry here. Again, symmetry, you know, absolutely perfect. We see this everywhere from the old world buildings. Another shot with a big ravelin out the front here just to confirm that this is a star fort. It's the same construction as all the other stars that we see around the realm. So there we go, guys, breaking the narrative. We clearly have a structure here that is clearly a star fort. That it, you know, what we're told is a star fort, the same as the other ones all around the realm that are unexplained, right? The ones in Africa and America, that they tell us were, were built by armies, you know, by soldiers. And they just change the narrative. It, we, we can see that they are the same structure, right? The same design features, the same engineering. But yet yeah, this one, they tell us, was around in the 6th century AD, 900 years before the first star was supposed to have been built. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that one. Thank you for liking this video, sharing it around, subscribing to my channel. Of course, hit the bell for notifications if you are subscribed. And if you would like to support me and my work, you will find links below where you can do that. And I would appreciate your help. So thank you for spending some time with me. Have an awesome day. And I'll talk to you all on the next upload. Bye for now. Nobody wins, unless everybody wins. Come!